muscles of the back can be divided into three groups, superficially, intermediate and intrinsic. Superficially associated the movements of the shoulder, intermediate associated the movements of the thoracic cage, intrinsic associated the movements of the vertebra column. The deep muscles develop in the back are described as intrinsic muscles. The superficial and intermediate muscles do not develop in the back and are classified as extrinsic muscles. The superficial back muscles are situated underneath the skin and superficial fascia. They originate from the vertebra column and attach to the bones of the shoulder, the clavicle, scapula and humerus. All these muscles are therefore associated with the movements of the upper limb. The muscles in the group are the traps, latimus dorsi, levator scapula and the rhomboids. The traps and lats lie the most superficially with the traps covering the rhomboids and levator scapula, not to forget the rectus spinae at the bottom here. The traps is a broad, flat and triangle muscle. The muscles on each side form a trapezoid shape. It is the most superficial of all back muscles which create of a large but not overdeveloped trap for thickness. The lats originate from the lower part of the back where it covers a wide area. The job of the lats are to extend, adduct and medially rotate the upper limb helping you have that wide lat look for a smaller waist illusion. There are two rhomboid muscles, major and minor. The rhomboid minor is situated superiorly to the major. The actions they take are to retract and rotate the scapula while giving you that middle thickness. The erector spinal is parallel on either outside of the vertebra and extending from the lower back of the skull all the way down to the pelvis. The erector spinae provides resistance that assists in the control action of bending forward at the waist as well as acting as a powerful extender to promote the return of the back to its correct position. So what I'm going to do is go through the best four back exercises you can do to develop that look and to target those muscles we've been through previously. But before we go into that I just want to mention how important mind to muscle connection is with building and developing a muscle group. Slow down and pay attention to how the muscles feel as you perform the movements. For example, if it's a leg press, notice how your quads and hamstrings feel as they fatigue. If you're doing a bench press and notice you get little no ch chest activation, swap movements to something like a neutral grip to the dumbbell press. Or even better, get a cable fly before the, the main movement. Pump out sets of 15 to 20 until you feel those chest calls burn. Then move on to the main lift and see the notice of a difference in the muscle recruitment. Force yourself to slow down and pay attention. If you continue to do the same thing, expect a different result. Well, you probably know how that will end for you in the end. Now for the first exercise, which is the lat pull down. A study in 2009 by Leach was seen to an increase of latimus dorsi muscle activity during the lat pull down following expert instruction where eight women with little or no background in strength training were asked to perform lat pull down exercise with only basic instruction, performing two sets of three repetitions at 30% of their max. After a brief rest, subjects then performed the same two sets of three repetitions following verbal technique instructions on how to emphasize latimus dorsi while emphasizing the biceps. The results show that untrained individuals can voluntarily increase the activity of a sp specific muscle group during the performance of a multi-joint resistance exercise. Activation on lats after being coached was better than before. The second exercise which is barbell rows. The purpose of this study is to determine muscle activation level expressed as a percentage of normalization contraction of elastomus dorsi, bicep brachii and a middle trap and rhomboid muscle groups during a series of different exercise tasks. Another great tip is to use lifting straps, which are here, or known as weightlifting wraps. The purpose of using these are that your grip strength is more likely to fatigue and fail much before your actual muscles. So by using them, it takes the focus out of the grip and more on the working muscle. Wide grip lat pull down, reverse grip pull down, seated row with retracted scapula and seated rows with non-retracted scapula was quantified during two 10 seconds isometric portions of the four exercises. The study by Gregory states that the, the highest latimus dorsi to bicep ratio of activation occurred during the wide grip pull down and the seated row. Highest levels of myoelectric activity in the middle trap slash rhomboids 
muscle groups occur during the seated row. Now moving on to the third exercise which is the barbell deadlift. If you're not using this exercise in your weekly routine I highly suggest you do as just from a great compound movement it also has great benefits from a hormonal point of view. If the major goal of weightlifting program is to gain overall strength you should add deadlifts into your routine. Deadlifts are a compound exercise that requires to use all the major muscle groups. The strength that you can achieve from performing deadlifts are also practical and can help you in your everyday life. Deadlifts are an effective exercise to develop your core strength, which result in by training the cent central muscles of the body. Muscles that can make up the core are found in the upper and lower back, your hips, your buttocks and your abdominals. All those muscles work in unison when you perform deadlifts. Having a strong core is important for maintaining healthy posture and preventing back problems. As an athlete, virtually all your movements require the stabilization of your core muscles. In order to generate maximum power, the strength of your core muscles also need to help you maintain proper balance. In order for you to generate maximum force, you must have stable core muscles. To execute a deadlift, the primary muscles are, are the glutes, hamstrings and spinal rectors. If you do a bent knee deadlift, your quadriceps are also heavily engaged. The integration of these muscles allow you to lift heavy weights than many other types of exercises. Lifting heavier weights will increase your overall muscle mass, which is the main factor that develops your strength. Deadlifts are intense and involve using your entire body. Consequently, it is important to warm up thoroughly before lifting heavy weights, starting with two warm-up sets and using lightweight with the high repetition. A study by Yodas et al. compared a conventional pull-up and chin-up with rotational meaning in an underhand grip, aka a chin-up. The study showed that both pull-up and chin-up showed that they had both the same lacked activation. The pull-up showed in the study suggesting they were initiated by the lower traps and pectoris major, and the chin-ups had more pec major and bicep brachii. I prefer an overhang wide grip on this movement as it challenges me more and I feel it through my lats and back more rather than in the biceps. Once you can complete 3 to 4 sets of your own body weight for 10 to 12 sets say, then maybe think about adding weight to yourself. This can be done in many, many different forms such as weight vested or holding a weight between your legs. Okay guys, hopefully you've all enjoyed the video. Please hit that thumbs up, give it a little smash up. If you have any questions regarding sort of the back training and are quite unsure about something, but just leave comments down below as always. Tick that subscribe button and I will see you all in the next video.